Hi everyone. Today it's the magical five chord day. What makes it so special? So let's start with some staff and a C major scale. Using the notes from the scale, we're going to create chords on top by adding thirds and fifths. And we'll mark them as major chords or minor chords. We are looking for a unique type or flavor of chord, a chord that tells us what key we are in. And there are no unique flavors here. We have four major chords and four minor chords. So if you see a G major chord in a lead sheet, you could be the five chord in the key of C, or the one chord in the key of G, or the four chord in the key of A. Nothing is unique. Now we're going to add one more note on each chord, and it's called the seventh, and it changes everything. There are two kinds of sevenths. There are major sevenths and dominant sevenths. A major seventh is one semitone below the root, and a dominant seventh is two semitones below the root. Here's another way of thinking about that. Every C major chord has many C roots. We can draw one at the top, for example. When we drop that root down one semitone, we create a C major seven. Let's take the D minor chord, the two chord in this scale. That D minor chord also has a root on the top. And we drop that root down two semitones to the C to create a D minor seventh. That's an easy way of thinking about seventh chords. Now back to our magic five chord. We're going to get rid of the major and minor and relabel our chords using whether they are a major seventh or a dominant seventh. You'll find the same pattern of major seventh and sevenths in every major scale. And some of these sevenths are built on minor chords, so we're going to label them minor sevenths. There are four of them. We have the first chord, the second chord, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth chord. So it's time to start eliminating chords that are the same, that have the same flavor, like for example, all the major sevenths, the one, four, and eight chord. We're going to eliminate those. And there's a lot of minor sevenths, the two chord, the three chord, the six chord, and the seventh chord. It's a minor seventh, a slightly special minor seventh, but a minor seventh nonetheless, gone. That leaves us with only one chord, the five chord. And in musical notation, instead of a number five, we use Roman numeral five. So it's different from the seven. And that is what makes the five chord so special. It's unique. In every major scale, the five chord is the only chord that is a seventh. Amazing. Okay, who cares, you say? Well, number one. What if we want to know what key we're in when we're playing a lead sheet or any kind of music? Let's take You've Got a Friend, for example. On initial observation, it looks like we're in the key of C. As a matter of fact, at the end of the first line, there is a C chord. But the E7 means we are in the key of A, A minor in fact. More E7s, more A minor. We can comfortably noodle in the key of A minor until we get to here where we're in the key of C. Now we're gonna go back to the key of A, so more noodling in the key of A minor, and we're still in the key of A minor. Do you see how the seventh chords are the flashlights in the forest of chords showing you what key you're in and how you can noodle? So it really is that easy. Look for the five chords, and when they're five seven chords, they're even easier to find. And you know what key you're in, and that is very powerful. 
because when you know what key you're in, you know what scale you can use to improvise. So now you're the superhero of lead sheets and chords because you know about the five chord. Experience its power. <laughs>